We'll do two more from uh, Give Me the News. On the back cover has a picture of me on the cover of a newspaper when I was doing a protest about acquaintance rape issues and I had blonde hair, but you can't really tell. <laughs> anyway, um, I will start with this one from Give Me the News, and I guess I guess it talks about cats. And I might embarrass John. This one is called On All Fours. When you sit and you work at your desk, when you're at home, it's like you're not here when you're here, when you're lost in your work. But I've noticed one thing. Whenever the cat comes near your desk, struts around your leg, maybe meows, you stop what you're doing and give him some attention. Sometimes the cat will even jump up on your desk, put his paw on the book you're reading to see if he'll scratch him behind his ears. So I wonder if this is what I have to do. I'll crawl over to your desk on all fours rub my head against your leg to see if you'll stop your work and notice me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> In times from work, this one is called Know You. It's weird wearing a name tag for this job because every once in a while, somebody starts talking to you and they make a point to say your name. And that's when you realize you're suddenly at a disadvantage because you just trying to do your job and this stranger keeps saying your name. When they say your name, they say it like it sounds like they're broadcasting it to the world. You almost feel like you're in an interrogation room and the lights being shown onto your face and they already know your name. It's weird when that, if you're just there and they're like, hi, Janet, how, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know who you are. This is kind of freaking me. You know, I mean, that's just the freakiest feeling, it is. I'm going to share with you a new poem from the most recent feature I had at the Baha'i Center where I wrote erasure poems for, uh, for Poetry Month. And this last one I did was um, actually the, an erasure poem is erasing words from another existing document to come up with something new. And I actually pulled a poem from Sri Sri, a man from the region of India that I had visited a few years ago. And I'm going to share this for you guys who don't know. He had a statue at the Bay of Bengal and he had his you know, clipboard and it said, revolutionary poetry is his forte underneath his poet, and I'm like, that's just the coolest thing ever. Um, I managed to find a translation from, from his native language, and I'm going to share part of that with you, and that is, uh, the original is called The History of the Nations, and this is called Poetic History. History, proud of exploitation of others. History, an exercise in mutual destruction. History, drenched in the blood of war. History, made slaves of the meek. Murderers climbed to glory. Entire past is wet with blood, if not tears. Decimated populations echo history. Connivance, jealousies, conflicts prove the course of history. Grand murderers and thugs built a bridge of swords to time. Artificial laws with other forces fell down as houses of cards. The deception, the heinous crimes of the mighty, the schemes can't be allowed. Exploitation of one person by another, one race by a different race, can't go on. All the downtrodden peoples, the different races of all continents, will broadcast in one voice the true nature of history. Which battles took place? Which kingdom lasted how long? The dates, the documents, these are not the essence. Stories hidden under the dark corners of history are wanted. Truth can't hide by being hidden. 
in the twilights of history? What was the development of the human? What achieved a grand truth? Which sculpture? What literature? Which science? What music? Which renunciation? Which dream? Thank you. Yeah.